Hi, welcome to Community Kitchen Teachables. My name is Anna and I work for Community Kitchen Programs of Calgary and I run a program called Calgary's Cooking. In this video, we are going to talk about what are the most basic small wares that you could use to stock your kitchen with. So when I say small wares, what I'm talking about or what I'm referring to is the actual physical equipment that you need in your kitchen at home to actually make a meal. So we are gonna start with our cutting boards. So I have a couple of different sizes here. One is a medium sized cutting board and the other is a little bit larger. The reason why it's a good idea to have a couple of different sizes, if you can, is because some of the food that you're going to need is going to take up more space. So it's a good idea to have a couple of cutting boards if you can swing it. If you can swing it, I would have a couple of different sizes. Now I do get asked, well, what is, the, what is a good cutting board material? Should I do glass? Should I do plastic? Should I do wood? My suggestion to you is stay away from glass cutting boards. Number one, they can easily shatter and you'll get glass everywhere, including in your food. Number two, they will dull your knives. So glass cutting boards are great for a decor item in your kitchen, but I would not use them to cut anything on. The other thing is plastic and wood cutting boards are fine. Wood cutting boards do tend to have a little bit more maintenance to them, especially if you spend a lot of money on them. They can last if you treat them really well, but my, I personally have both a wooden cutting board and I have the plastic cutting boards at home. The advantage to the plastic cutting boards is that you can stick them in your dishwasher and you can clean them very easily that way. So my go-to is always the plastic cutting boards, but wood cutting boards are fine as well. The next item is mixing bowls. So you can use plastic or you can use glass or you can use metal such as these ones. I would go with at least one of each size. So you'll see inside here that I do have them stacking in or nesting in each other. Of course, you have your smaller one for small type items and then you go up in size. Having a really nice big mixing bowl is good if you're mixing things like Caesar salad, bread, dough, anything that's going to take up a large amount. Having a big mixing bowl is a good idea. Okay. The next thing is a couple of really good size frying pans is all you need. Some people like to have a nice assortment of frying pans. It's completely up to them. Having one that's a bit on the smaller size is a good idea for doing things like fried eggs, scrambled eggs, sauteing onions, that kind of thing. The larger size frying pan is good for things like if you're searing off a steak or you're cooking mushrooms with onions for your steak, this is a good size to have as well. A couple of really good um, frying pans is all you need essentially. I would also look for frying pans that you can insert into the oven, okay? So that means that your handle of your frying pan has to withstand being inside an oven anywhere from about 350 to about 450 degrees. So if you're looking for a frying pan, my suggestion is make sure that your handle is heat resistant. Pots, let's talk about cooking pots. So. In front, we have three different sizes here, and in the back, we have a couple of different sizes here. So usually, if you buy a set of pots, you can usually buy them as a set. So they'll have three or four different sizes. That is a really good way to get yourself a really good set of pots. You can also buy pots individually if you want. That is a good way to get, if you're just looking for something that's a little bit bigger than you might have in the set, or if you're looking for something that's a little bit more of a specialty item. So I would start with a set of pots that are large, medium, and small, okay? You will also find too, getting one that's a little bit bigger than the largest one that comes in the set is going to be good for things like soup and stews, chili, spaghetti sauces, that kind of thing. So these would be good for cooking pasta, 
potato, um, heating up some soup. That's what these pots are really good for. This would be really good for, like I said, the batch cooking, the soups, the stews, and what have you. This pot here, this is called a stock pot. And this is exactly what it's made for, is making things like chicken stock or beef stock. However, I do have a stock pot at home myself, and I do use it for things like chilies and soups. Again, just like what you would use this one for. This one just gives you a little bit more room, okay? The next item is a strainer. You're going to want to have, you have a really good strainer. It doesn't matter if the strainer is metal or plastic. This is really good for things like, of course, straining pasta, if you're blanching vegetables or cooking vegetables and you need to pour out the hot water. That's what the strainer is really good for. Another good thing to have in your kitchen as a basic is a baking sheet or what a lot of people call a cookie sheet. You want to make sure that your cookie sheet will fit into your oven. So don't get a ginormous cooking sheet unless you know the size of your oven. I do get asked what is better to have a cooking sheet or a cookie sheet that is lighter in metal in color or darker in color. It doesn't matter which. The only thing I would suggest or keep an eye out for is that if your baking pan is darker, that means that your product that you put on your baking sheet is going to cook faster. So just keep that in mind, but both will work fine. The other thing that you wanna consider as well is a casserole dish. Now, this one is made out of Pyrex, okay? It has handles on both sides, so it's easy to grasp out of the oven. This one does come with a nice convenient cover so that when it comes out of the oven and it cools, I can cover it up with this cover and take it with me if I'm going to a potluck. It is a nice addition to have to have the cover, but it's not absolutely necessary because you can always cover up this dish with plastic wrap at the end as well. Um, this is a 9 by 13. You can get them smaller. You can certainly get them bigger, but your standard size is a 9 by 13. So this would be great for things like casseroles, like a tuna casserole or a chicken casserole, but it'd also be good for things like lasagna. Okay. Your next addition to your kitchen is a grater. This is called a box grater because it is shaped just like a box. And it has various blades on, the, on all four sides, sides so that you can grate whatever it is you're grating, whether it's cheese or vegetables. A lot of people will use a box grater when they're grating zucchini, if there's chocolate zucchini loaf or something to that effect. This is a, it also has the handle so that when you are grating it on your counter, you've got somewhere to grasp and then you're using the grater accordingly. You can buy box graters at any store that sells kitchen equipment. They are not hard to find. Sometimes they're shaped like a square, sometimes they're triangular. Either, either one doesn't matter what size or what shape you get. Just keep in mind that it will take up some of your cupboard space or your uh, counter space. And then the last item that we'll feature is the electric can opener. Now, electric can openers are generally a little bit more expensive than the handheld. Uh, I would suggest getting both an electric can opener and a handheld can opener because both are very versatile. For those that have arthritis in your hands or your wrists, using an electric can opener is not going to strain your hand or your wrist or bother your arthritis, but there is a little bit more cost associated to it. Well, that concludes our lesson on the most basic kitchen small wares that you could have in your home kitchen. Thank you very much for spending the time with me and may you have yourself a great day.